Hello, everybody. This is just a little quick introduction to this video before we bring on our friend Cindy. Of course, I'm joined here with Stephanie. And we just thought we'd hop on before I do an intro because we wanted to really try to make a point that I think we've been trying to make for a really long time. And sometimes I feel like we're, we're talking to a wall. I know most of our friends watching right now understand what we're saying because we literally have the coolest subscribers in the whole universe. But we're going to be talking about the history of Halloween today with Cindy, which is something I've covered before in the past as well. And Stephanie and I, we, we talk all day off camera about what's going on. And, and it's, I don't know how to say this nicely, so I'm just going to say it bluntly. If you think you're awake, but you're still picking up your pitchfork and trying to condemn other people and destroy other people because they celebrate a holiday like Halloween, then you're not awake you're still dead asleep to the matrix. I've said on multiple videos and I'll keep saying it again till I'm blue in the face because this is just science. Darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. So everything that the darkness has used was created for us by the light. So why are we going to destroy everything? just because the darkness used it. Does that make sense, Stephanie? Am I making sense? Yeah, I'm, I'll put an analogy to this or a, an example. When we have negative energy that's stored in our body, you know, if we're talking about the energetic body and shadow work, right? We're facing our shadow self. We're transmuting the energy to bring out the better side of ourselves, to learn from the experience, to uh, transcend, right? The, the, the whole point is to take the shadow and, and to shine the light in the shadow, to work in the shadow, right? It's the same thing. Same thing. It's just a holiday. It's it's a you're holiday. taking the energy that has been of a holiday that's been used and manipulated like the shadow self, right? Our shadow self is the side of us we don't want to face. That's that darker side of ourselves. We all have it. And then... We're taking that holiday and we're restoring it and transmuting the energy and taking it back. That's taking back your power and using it for the greater good of humanity. I don't find anything wrong with that. No. I'll ask you this, Stephanie. Did Satan create Halloween? No. In fact, if there's a holiday Satan created, that was Christmas. Yeah. That's Mithra's day. And um, I... It, and yeah. Cindy's going to go into the nitty gritty of Halloween, but it is actually a very holy day. Very holy. Well, and, and I want to, I want to, she's going to talk about um, the day of the dead, which we see in Latin America. And, and that's not what we think it is. It's an honoring of the, of our ancestors, it's an honoring of those who, who've gone before us this time of year that Halloween falls on the fall time. This is my favorite time of year. And this is when the veil is the thinnest. God made it that way. The creator God, our God made it that way. For a reason. And, you know, we look at these scary costumes and all that kind of stuff. Guys, that's not satanic. If you do your research, people would dress up in scary costumes. Cindy might get into this to scare away the demons because the bell was the thinnest. So it was a time they recognized that they could communicate clearer with the spirit world. But in saying that, they knew that the demons could also come through, too. So it was their responsibility to push the demons back. So they would dress up in scary costumes to push the demons back. So before you go condemning people for dressing up in costumes and having fun, understand where that comes from. And this is my opinion. Evil doesn't live in laughter and fun, does it? Mm -hmm. Evil lives in action and intent. If a bunch of children are dressing up as skeletons and scary goblins, but they're laughing and they're having fun together and they're going to the neighbor's house and they're having a community event where they're getting candy from the neighbors and the neighbors are telling them how cute they look and then they go home and they go to bed. That's nothing but love and laughter. That's God's present there. Why are you going to take that from your children? You just reminded me of my dad growing up where, oh, he's so good with kids. And he's one family member I truly, truly miss a lot because I never had anything against him ever. We're actually a very like, 
And he would open the door and go, oh my goodness, look at you guys. And the dogs would be barking off the wall, you know, because the dogs, we had yippy little dogs. And, and he would just be so cute with the kids. Not only were the kids lighting up from his expression and the way he presented himself, but he had such joy with interacting with the children. Such joy in his, you could see it in his eyes. He, he would light up his total, like, cause he was, he, you know, he, I, in my opinion, I think he has some depression and he would be so, he's always happy when he's around little kids. Cause they just light him up. Innocent. Like, yeah. The innocence of it all. And I, I miss, I miss that. Actually, I really miss that. We don't get trick or treaters on my street. We, we uh, listen, I, every year I buy candy in the hopes of having a trick or treater, but I live in Midtown. So it's mostly adults here. But I would love to be in the position to be able to pass out candy to kids. Can you imagine the two of us doing that together? That would be oh, hilarious. I would have so much fun. Like, that would be oh fun. my gosh. And, yeah. this, and, and I know Cindy's about to sign on to go deeper into it, but I'm just begging you guys. We don't want to go from one cabal to another cabal. I don't want to live in the handmaiden's tale. Mm -mm. We got to put the fucking pitchforks down. Lucifer is the god of destruction. How clever is it for the controllers to send infiltrators into the truth or community to, to convince us that these hallow these these holidays that were at one point holy are now wrong, and so we got to get rid of them. Lucifer is the god of destruction. So I ask you, if you're reveling in destroying people's happiness and destroying the laughter of children and destroying a holiday where 99% of the people are not hurting anyone, they're just having fun, then who, what God are you serving? We need to have a form of, um, how do I put this? Again, it goes based to intent. It's all about intent. You know, the words you speak are actually spell castings. What's the intent behind it? Is it to do harm or is it to show love? Same goes with a holiday. You know, holiday like Christmas is really Mithra's day. And the way I look at it is I'm going to continue to celebrate it because it's a time of family mm -hmm. getting together. Yeah. And, um, and it's fun to decorate trees. It's fun to make cookies. It's fun. Yes, it is it's fun, fun to decorate the tree. It's fun to see your child open up uh, a present that they've wanted and they get all excited and there's joy in their eyes. And, you know, there's a lot of love in that. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with that. It's the intent. Yeah. If you're celebrating these holidays with the intent of destruction and harm, then there's a problem. Then you need to rethink your methods and you need to rethink your, where your soul is at, but we can't destroy these things because honestly, they all originate from source good. creator. Yeah. All originate from the good. The Ankh originates from the good. The eye of Horus originates from the good. The pyramid is co comes from the good. But again, these are symbols, even the, the, I'm not going to, the N A Z I symbol. Oh, yeah, actually, it was that, yeah, the swastika that's from was, Japan. Was, it was a good, yeah, it was a good symbol. If in the that's east, from Japan, well, actually, it's from India too. It's in the shallows. Okay. Of India. Um, so, and I will say, because I know Cindy is about to sign on, guys, I just beg you to another thing I want to say as well don't you dare, as a truther who's awakened, go around telling people what they can and can't do as far as holidays. That's how we got ourselves stuck in this mess, anyways. Exactly. You know, we all have free will. Stop trying to um, control others. Yeah, we, we need to get out of this this whole controlling thing. Uh, you know, I speak to people I do readings on about this, like with their kids. Let it go. You're, you're there for a reason with your kids. You made a soul agreement with your kids to be there for them, to carry them, birth them, raise them, put a roof over their head, feed them, show them love and compassion, sh uh, steer them in a way that is the loving way of living but other than that you got to give them some sort of free will as time goes on as they get older there's a little bit of letting go letting go letting go same with your neighbors if your neighbor is celebrating halloween and you're a staunch fundamentalist leave your neighbor alone 
they're not over there hurting anybody. They're having fun. And there's more a presence of God in that laughter in their house than there is in the sorrow of yours. So, I bought a house from a fundamentalist family. Did I tell you that, Bryce? That's probably why it's so, so hard. So the, first, the funny thing is, as a Christian, being a Christian all these years, I still didn't think there was anything wrong with Halloween because I understood it was intent. I We never dressed in scary, scary costumes. For gosh sakes, my son dressed like a pickle. He's in a pickle costume three years in a row. He loves his pickle costume. Well, even if Angie, he dresses in Angie got it kick out of i'm gonna have to show her a picture of it because it's hysterical but he he went around as a teenager just like they're all in their scary costume he's like i'm a pickle and the, and, and you see kids get so proud of their costumes like my they nieces do. and nephews are always so proud i don't even know what the hell they are because i'm not familiar with kids characters today yeah so proud to show me their costume why are you gonna take that away from your kid it's just it's a fun way for kids to hang out with their friends Get all goody, be excited, have fun, laugh, giggle, get a little hyper from the sugar. Who cares? Think about this. One night. Night. As an adult, I go buy candy every year in hopes to be able to give it to kids on Halloween. The neighbors want to see the kids like your dad. They want to say, want to have them come to the door and put candy in their baskets. It's, it's such an amazing community thing. And when we were kids, we got to wear our costumes to school on the day of Halloween and do parades and show our costumes. And it was, I have so many fun memories. Not one sacrifice was made. I didn't see any like real 99% of the people aren't doing that. Okay. We, ha we cannot control other people. We cannot go into the handmaiden's tail, pulling our pitchforks up and saying, cause if you've got your pitchfork drawn to condemn someone for celebrating Halloween, you're no different than the cabal. You're no different than the controllers. We got to stop putting our tentacles in other people's shit. Yeah. Just keep your, keep, keep your hands to yourself. Okay. And I mean that spiritually, um, emotionally, mentally, and physically. Okay. Keep pay, pay more mind. That is telling me when we have our pitchforks up, we're not working on ourselves. Exactly. It's projection, projection, projection. Yeah. You yeah. got something going on in your own self. You're not addressing. So you're going to project it onto other people. That is another type of a polarized negative. That is, yeah, a, and, that is another type a, of it. And I'm going to tell you, there's a reason why in the United States of America, our constitution has separation of church and state. And I grew up in a very, very, very conservative Christian family. And my parents supported the separation of church and state because when a, when a, a religion is in control, look at what's happened with the controllers. When a religion is controlling a country, it gets bad real fast. Okay, because you're imposing. I mean, if you go to the Middle East in some places, you got to wear a woman. Oh, God. Yes, yes. She can only I show her eyes. That. Yes, we need to la allow people the freedom. In our constitution, we're allowed the freedom to pursue happiness. My happiness, your happiness might look different. We can't stand in the way of somebody else's happiness because where there's happiness, where there's love, there is God. To love another person. So there's a great quote from Victor Hugo where he says, to love another person is to see the face of God. And regardless of who Victor Hugo was or was not, that has always remained one of my favorite quotes. And But it's a true quote, it's true regardless quote. of who he is. So when you see a neighbor, when an, an elderly lady, I mean, it gets emotional, like how many neighborhoods are there elderly late ladies whose husbands passed away, their kids are gone and grown and they carve their pumpkin and they go and get their candy every year and they wait for the kids to come to their, their door to be able to see this, those babies and they're cute. Oh, it makes me emotional. And the door opens and the lady's hand and they're happy and they're giving that kid. That's God. That's the love of God. Yeah. Stop making this something it's togetherness. Not. And it's the thing is, if you, I forgot who quoted this, but if you're hating another person for whatever, you're actually hating a, a fractal of yourself. We all come from the same source, God. Yes. And we all have to start loving one another. And the thing too is um, when it comes to rules and regulations, those things should just be the common sense things. Don't yeah. go, don't go destroying somebody. Don't go killing somebody. Don't, don't um, RIP somebody. You know, those are just common sense when it comes well, to and rules people, and regulations. In my opinion, I know the church teaches differently, but in my opinion, most people are pretty good people at, at the heart of it. They have good intentions. Most people are not going to be doing what the controllers do. That's a very small group of people in this world that has done this. Most people would be horrified if they saw something like that. So live and let live.
yeah. live and let live guys. That's all we're asking you is to live and let live. Um, and Cindy is on her way in right now. So I'm just going to keep the camera rolling and we're just going to go ahead and admit Cindy in. And I'm getting hot. I got hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. And yes, I am aware. I've been wearing the same sweater in like every episode. I got it when I was up with, St with Stephanie. It's my favorite it's, sweater. It's your only sweater, really. It's like One of your only one. sweaters. I'm sweatshirts, but <laughs> here she is. Can you hear me? Can you see I can me? hear you. Can't see you. We're already recording, Cindy, just so you know. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Hold on. Let's see what's going on here. Steph and I were addressing some things before we got started with you that I felt were very, very important uh, when it comes to understanding these holidays. And <coughs> there she is. There she is. Miss America. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm running late. I was about to set up the computer here and uh, uh, I looked out and there was a pop this big. He must have caught one of the pigeons um, that hang out around here. And so I got mesmerized watching the hawk with the pigeon. And That's a the, huge spiritual sign, though, hawks. I had a huge oh, hawk flying I mean, over my car the other one of my, like, animals. It's one of my, my spirit animals, for sure. So that's why I was like, and so then I got out of my video camera and started recording it and stuff. And then, like, I'm okay. Will you send it to me, Cindy, so I can share it with our viewers? Because I think that I think we got I was just saying before you got on, like Steph and I have some really cool I hate I hate to say subscribers. I feel like such a douchebag when I say subscribers, but our friends that watch us in this in our communities, we have really cool people that watch these videos. And so I'm sure they're gonna love to see that video of, of that hawk that you saw, Cindy. Yeah, so. I can send it to you. I have no makeup on. You look beautiful. You, I would have never even guessed. You look great. I um, was driving. Uh, I think it was either yesterday or the day before. I was getting all these like numbers coming at me. I sent Bryce a couple of video or a picture, and I was driving, and all of a sudden, I don't know what bird it was. It could have been a hawk, or it was like a crow. Bird. It was a huge, huge bird, huge, like blackish brown bird, giant. I actually thought it was like an eagle at first. And it was flying with my car overhead, like for like a mile, like just, just flying with me. Oh, wow. And then I've never seen, I've had birds fly by my car. I've been seeing like a lot of blue jays lately, mm -hmm. but this one was a giant blackish brown bird and it flew over my car, but then it was like following me overhead, but it was in view of my, my, um, dashboard. Like I, I could see it flying with me and I'm like. What is God trying to tell me right now? I wonder. So mm -hmm. I still got to figure that out. But yeah, that was That's pretty my cool. favorite thing to do is go home and like Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what everything means. I know hawks are huge. Hawks are big. Uh, I will say too, yeah. if you guys ever get to come practice at Cindy Shala or her mystery school, I always call it a Shala. She calls it a mystery school. The back yard where Cindy's actually facing a window. If she's in her shell, she's facing a window right now that mm -hmm. it's a, this back garden. And when I'm teaching on Sundays, I get mesmerized because of the amount of birds that fly into that garden of Cindy's. Like there's always so many cardinals out there, bluebirds out there. They're always out there. And I'll be teaching. And the students, of course, are like upside down. So they can't see. And I'll just be watching these birds like, you know, it's, it's just, be it's very, it's a, Cindy's uh, Shala is a very magical place. Cindy's done a very good well, job. Birds, making it so. are, birds are definitely, they're definitely one of my spirit animals, if you will. Always have been since I was little. And so it just feels natural for me to set up a space. You know, I have bird feeders out there too. But yeah, and I've had hawks visit here regularly because there are you know there are hawks that are around and uh, they'll come sit on the fence but that's the first time that i've no uh oh uh, go. oh we lost your your video oh there you are there you sorry <laughs> she raptured <laughs> can you still hear me okay yeah okay um that's the first time that i've seen a hawk have its meal <laughs> down there and I've seen bird feathers 
Like I've collected like little bird feathers. I I think there was an unfortunate bluebird that got um, was somebody's meal. Um, and there's a big pile of pigeon feathers out. <laughs> pigeon, but hey, Listen, me, I guess you know. I have a collection of feathers here too, and there was one time Ravi found a feather up in the North Georgia mountains that he had in his mouth and carried it back and. We debated on whether taking the feather with us or not because it was one of the endangered <laughs> birds of Georgia, and so you get to trouble. But we didn't kill. We it was just a feather that Rob, but we kept. It's another mm -hmm. room that Robbie found and was like carrying with them and stuff. Um, we oh, had. Wow. I'll tell you this one story. It was speaking of endangered birds before we get into Halloween. So when I was growing up back in the dark ages <laughs> we were all growing up when people were a little bit more free, we would let our dogs. I think most people. Um, especially in Georgia, your dog, now your dogs are confined to your property and to your house. But back then the dogs would just run around the neighborhood, just like the kids, the dogs and the kids would just be loose around the neighborhood all the time. And so we had this English setter. We had a lot of dogs because my dad's a veterinarian, but we had this one English setter burlap. I loved burlap so much that would go and hunt at night. And he would always bring us uh, prey at the back garage door. So every morning we'd open the door to go to school, to get in the car. and We'd have to step over like a, a mole or a rabbit or something burlap had brought us every because they do that they bring you gifts right well one morning i opened the door and there was an owl dead eyes wide laying on oh the, my the, the mat and i started screaming because i'd never seen an owl before and my dad came out again my dad's a veterinarian and my dad got rid of the owl and before we even got in the car to go to school he like my dad's like six, four. He's really tall. He like had to kneel down and look at my sister. And he, he was like, you girls don't mention this at all because the owl that burlap had hunted for us was an endangered species. <laughs> and he was like, do not mention this to anyone. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. But it, I mean, it was our dog. Like we didn't tell it, you know, like, I, don't know. Doesn't know. I know yeah. that was, he was just like cool gift. Here you go. <laughs> kind of like a cat. Cats with mice, they always give their owners their their mice as gifts. Actually, I could use a cat in my house right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. This time of year, those mice, they just like to come into the... I have an older house, so they like to oh, come in. House. We lost your video again, Cindy. There I you hope go. it doesn't keep doing that. It's Sorry. okay, it does. We'll, 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 we'll roll with it. Um, okay. why don't we, speaking of cats, black cats, and, uh, why don't we get into this, the subject at hand, which is Halloween. And I've, I've covered a lot in the past over the different elements of the history of this time of year. Um, as we were saying before, Cindy came in, I think for all three of us, I think I can say this, I, this is our favorite time of year. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's just a beautiful time of year. The veil is the thinnest. And so what we're seeing, and I know Cindy is kind of separate from the, the community that Stephanie and I are on on YouTube, is what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of people polarizing to an ex They're going from an extreme of like thinking that these holidays are satanic and we have to stop celebrating them, which we know the darkness can't create anything. Only the light can create anything that's been used by the darkness has been inverted by the light or something that there was the light. We talk about this Isis with Osiris, with the eye of Horus, all that kind of stuff has been inverted. And so my thing is, and we were saying this before Cindy came on, I love the holiday of Halloween. I love it. I think it's one of the best holidays that we have to see children get dressed up, to see them collect candy. It's just, it's a, it's a very community oriented holiday. You know, it's, it's to me, it's, it's, and, and of course the spiritual side of it where the veil is the thinnest, um, our ancestors knew this. We also have this beautiful autumn time here in the Northern hemisphere which I know spiritually, a lot of spiritualists will talk about the autumn or the fall, as we call it in America, as being such a, a great lesson to us spiritually, because the trees will let just let go of their leaves. They don't hold on. They just let go. And they trust that in spring, new leaves will come again. They don't, they don't question. They just release. And so what a beautiful metaphor for us as human beings, because we have a real hard time releasing. We hold on and hold on and hold on. And we sometimes don't trust that the newness is coming in. But this time of nature, which with the changing of the leaves is gorgeous and beautiful. It, it creates such a beauty that releasing that entering into 
the death period is such a beautiful time of nature, what we can learn from that as humans too. So Cindy, I'm going to let you take it away with where you want to start with this subject. Yeah, I mean, Halloween is, yeah, one of my favorite seasons. Um, in leave, you know, speaking of like Libra season, Scorpio season, these are the times where um, it's a really potent, magical window that opens up. And yes, we talk very often about how the veil becomes thinner between our realm and the realm of the unseen. And if you talk to a lot of people, whether they believe in Halloween, whether they even believe it in, you know, the esoteric, I mean, most people will say that they feel something. They might not be able to explain it, but they're like, ah, you know, there's just something that feels different. So there's this natural tendency, even for those who, you know, maybe are not into intuitive or instinct or psychic development or any of that stuff, you know, even the ones who are not into it, they can still sense and feel that something like truly like magical is happening. You know, so it doesn't even take a, a highly trained priestess to feel this time of year. And that's part of the reason why it's so magical. So if you do your work and you do the work that empowers you or that grows you or the work of letting go, you know, if you're talking about releasing attachment, letting go, dissolving old skin, shedding the things that no longer serve you, your, your spiritual practice can really flourish because you are being so nourished right now by the, the other realm. You know what I mean? And we can take that with us. The work that you do during this time of year, you can really take that with you into the winter season when it does get more dark and it, got, it does get more introspective and you feel a natural pulling to draw in. Yeah. You take with you everything that you worked on during, uh, during this time, during this season, during this fall time to, to nourish those seeds, you know, those seeds that you planted. So that, that it can either be the, the things that you shed or seeds that you plant. It could be a combination of both. And we use in the winter time, you know, late fall to winter time is this hibernation period. And just like any seed, it needs to be in the deep, dark, fertile soil for a while. You know, it needs to, to be there incubating in earth herself in that quiet, like in that stillness for then it can, uh, it can, you know, it can bloom or it can, it, it can flourish during the springtime. So the seeds that we plant right now are the things that we shed, the things that we dissolve, the things that we then pull in during the fall time. We nurture that during the darkness, the winter time. And then when the springtime comes, it's been, it's been said, you know, then the, the true blooms can come out. But that's kind of how the seasons follow your own spiritual progression. If you were to use the seasons and the ebbing and flowing and what they mean, what they can mean for you in your own spiritual development and your own awakening, which I think is beautiful. It's beautiful. And that makes so much sense. And I know I've, I've said this in my classes at, at your shala before. You know, Guruji back in the, you think about the Ashtanga practice or the yoga practice, the postures give work too. And in India, it's monsoon season would be like their winter. And so Guruji would only give postures during the summer. But when it went into monsoon season, no more postures, you work with what you have. So that mm -hmm. makes so much sense. And when you are, and that's one thing I think too, where we've been disconnected um, as a humanity, we think for some reason we're above nature like we're not a part of this we're here on earth but somehow we're not really a part of this nature but absolutely we are and that's part of what any deep spiritual practice teaches you is how to ebb and flow with the energy and the consciousness of nature because you very much are a part of nature you're in a human body that's living the laws of nature i mean hello women we've experienced nature once a month we can't escape that. Like it's even women who've had a hysterectomy still have the boob aches once a month. Like you can't escape mm -hmm. that. So you have to learn how to work with it. And that's what I know when I studied the Navajo with the skinwalkers, they would teach a lot like within like magic. 
that black magic was working against nature for your own desires. White magic is working with it, is learning to ebb and flow mm -hmm. with nature. And so we know that historically the Halloween um, day is called Samhain. Is that correct? Am I mm -hmm. saying that correctly? Samhain. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why this one day? What is Samhain? What does that mean? And I, and I know for, and we're, I want to get into the Day of the Dead too with the Latin American cultures, but for people of um, European lineage, especially Samhain, I mean, all of us, even though Cindy is Peruvian, she's got some, she's got some white, white, white jeans in her as well. The Irish. I, do. I got some <laughs> European. Yeah. So, and Stephanie, we were all three sure. of us on the screen got some, well, I got a lot of your, but, but the, this was what our ancestors, especially if you are of European descent, this is what your ancestors knew. Now let's break this down too. the Celts, the Druids, Anglo-Saxons, all these people we know, um, galactically come from a constellation, a planet called Kentekia. They're the Nordics that brought this to planet earth. So if we're talking about the deep woo woo, deep conspiracy juju, the Druid practices around this were brought from the planet Kentekia, which was a positively oriented planet. So let's talk about Samhain, shall we? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, in, in those Celtic and Druid traditions, and those older uh, uh, pagan, in the, we were talking about this too, the word pagan was actually created by Christians. Pagans didn't call themselves pagans. Um, the, I guess the, uh, there, there was a deeper Latin word, but I can't remember what it was, but it was, you know, back during the they were the Romans were doing the, you know, the transformation, everything into Christianity. They started calling the, the people who practiced the old religion pagans. But it, um, but yeah, pagans never called themselves pagans. But just the, the old religion or the old philosophies or the old, the old ways of doing things was always in connection with nature, always. Um, because that's what they lived in. You know, the people of the old time, I mean, that was what ruled their life, what the sun was doing, you know, the, the moon being such a big thing in that, that they have to figure out how to incorporate all that into their life to determine their their survival and their food and everything. So it was just a natural thing for uh, the people back in the old, old times to have a very deep connection with nature and yes our body is made up of the elements you know we talked before um, i think the last time i was with you we were talking about the pentagram and how it represents the the elements and how we hold all the elements within our bodies we hold spirit we hold air we hold fire we hold earth we hold water and so we are actually made up of the earth stuff yeah. Right. And so um, for the, the older religions or whatever you want to call it, you know, the way people lived back then, it was it wasn't even a religion. It was a way of life. You know what I mean? It's like it was just their way of life, the way of living. Um, October 31st, that was considered their more their new year, more so than like the actual new year. You know, this this time of year, Samhain was more of their new year. Um, they knew, sorry. We lost, we lost you again. Hear me, right? <laughs> they knew it was still, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. They knew it was like the harvesting season and it was, they were about to enter into um, the dark season, which was a very scary time for people uh, back then too. Because that was when, you know, people died of cold or people died of famine. And, you know, you just look at the way people lived back then. And so, you know, going into the wintry month was very precarious. You know, so uh, this time of year was definitely just if you look at the regular living part was an important part for them. Um so it was always March, October 31st, or this time of year as more their, their new year. And they had to rely on um, I mean, Yeah, let's think about that for a second, because especially for northern people living in northern Europe, the winters were rough. 
Yeah. They were mm-hmm. rough. I mean, I, I obviously look very Northern European, but I would not survive in snow today because I've been in the South for too long, but they, they were, and they understood the majesty of nature. They understood that man versus nature, nature always wins. And so they had to make sure they were loaded up on their harvest for food. They weren't going to, they didn't have a Kroger to go drive by and pick up some bread, you know, get mm-hmm. some milk on your way home for the Piggly Wiggly. They didn't have that. So they had to make sure they were loaded up. I know with the Christmas, like the Yuletide, the Christmas tree, that was all a part of bringing warmth into the house during like the darkest days of the year. And, um, you know, I, and I know for a lot of the uh, Northern European cultures, uh, they would load up on very heavy alcohol for purposes of keeping mm-hmm. them warm too. It was mm-hmm. a, a warm to keep their bodies warm and they weren't going to be doing much work during this time. That was all done in the warmer times of year. So yes. And that is to me, that's such a beauty that we've lost in our society. Yeah. We, we think we can come from practical aspects. Like yes. if you look at the, the, the practicality too, besides the magic, I mean, it was just a practicality. It's how you have to, to live in order to mm-hmm. survive. And you relied on your community too. I mean, we're talking about like more tribal type because if your house, if something messed up in the winter in your house, you were going to have to rely on your neighbor for that support because man versus nature, nature always wins. Those snowstorms were rough. And, um, and so we see Samhain was very much a community come together at the end of what would have been the harvest season, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, and then, yes, and then the feeling too, you know, like we were talking about before, there's just a natural feeling, you know, that there's something going on. Nature is doing something. I mean, nature is actually going through the process of releasing the trees, especially if you live somewhere that's deciduous, where there's a lot of deciduous trees like this, you know, a lot of trees are falling. You can actually feel nature pulling back and you can actually feel it, but you can sense that. That, that That's nature so true. is doing something, right? And so it's naturally just pulling, pulling in, pulling all back, of your senses. In. It's like all of your senses. Like for me, like living in the Northeast, we have a lot of the the beautiful foliage, right? The smell in the air is completely different. Yeah, like the mm-hmm. smell. Yeah, and it's like, and you're right, Cindy. Like you can feel everything kind of just releasing itself. The tree, you know, the, the leaves are falling and everything. The air is different. Oh, we lost you again. <laughs> Hold on a second. We're playing musical chairs today, guys. That's a Halloween party party trick, right? Musical chairs. Um, I'm, can you still hear me? We can hear you, just can't see you. Okay. Why don't y'all do, keep talking. I'm going to switch my camera out. Perfect. Okay. So go ahead and keep, keep awesome. talking, Stephanie. I'm listening. Let me switch out this camera. Okay. Perfect. See, guys, we're not professional TV people. We're all just in our houses and yoga studios. <laughs> talking to our I friends. Know. You know? Um, I think people have this. Some, some people, not everybody. I think they think we are like on studio sets. And I'm like, I'm in my bedroom. My dog's right here. <laughs> so um, I'm actually going to come up with an example of what Cindy is almost like talking about here because I'm actually going through it right now. So um, I've had some beautiful conversations with Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. And I've had a lot of trauma happen to me this time of year in my life. And I've ended up, my my birthday, I'm a Libran. So my birthday is beginning of October. Some things have happened to me on my birthday. So I've had a lot of traumas happen to me in my life this particular time of year. When I was a child, this was actually my favorite time of year. As an adult, that has shifted because of those traumas. But what we were talking about the other day is what a beautiful time to end that. You know what I mean? Like this is a time of endings and reflection and releasing, right? So because of that, that it was helping me put things in perspective because I was struggling. My birthday is always a trigger especially the last Mm -hmm. couple of years where family is not exactly there anymore. So, you know what I mean? It it was one of those things I'm learning to start like the, like the leaves on the trees. I'm learning to shed that right. That's part of my work and just observing 
those emotions and then letting the leaves fall off the tree. And having faith so, that new leaves are going to come in and replace the old. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's what I was thinking too. We're talking about that. Like I know Ram Dass has written about this a lot, that there is a, uh, there is something very holy and very sacred around death. Mm -hmm. And we fear it. We fear that. But and actually the Magdalene manuscript that I released uh, this Tuesday morning, um, I read there's a section where she talks about this, watching her friend pass away. And it got me very emotional because there was such a beauty in the letting go that she spoke about. There was a beauty in allowing the life to pass when it was its time. And Rob Doss would write about this, how there needs to be just as much of a holy and sacred gathering at a, at a person's time of death as there is at a time of birth. Uh, because it is a holy passage and we see how again how beautiful death can be through nature mm -hmm. and we go through and also in our lives we all just have, we have one big mac daddy death at the end of this life where our soul leaves the body but we go through many deaths throughout our lives many rebirths yeah. many different chapters and that's that learning just to let go because sometimes we're forced to let go before the new is actually presented itself and we have to live mm -hmm. on that faith. Nature is excellent teacher when it comes to faith. Nature yeah. never questions God. Nature never questions mm -hmm. faith. It just God is in nature. Yeah. And that's very much a shamanic perspective way of looking at things that the shaman doesn't fear death. No. You know, they, they've gone through the, the process. And I know that was part of, you know, uh, a part of my process too. And, um, and the, you know, my own personal activations and initiations, you know, through, you know, becoming a priestess and especially more of a shadow priestess and the shadow in a good way in that you look at the things that people are most often frightened of, like death and uh, um, seeing it from a different lens, from a different point of view and you know, in the, the you know, speaking of, of the way people lived back then versus the way we live now, people back then they lived closer to death than we do now. That's a really good point. They did for sure. And so they were very much in tuned with the death, with the dying, you know, sicknesses. They went around differently back then. You know, people died at a much younger age. Um, children often, you know, women often died at childbirth, you know, children, they died. I mean, they were lucky if they could live past the age five, six, seven years old because of all the different diseases and everything that was around. And so uh, the people back then, they had a very different relationship with death because death was always all around them. It was so always, there's a different appreciation. The that you have toward life because uh, uh, making seeing death gives you more of an appreciation for life. Yeah. And now we're more disconnected from, from death. And I'm not saying that, you know, that we want to be, you know, we want the people around us dying and all that, but it just changes our relationship mm -hmm. with uh, death and our own mortality when we are so separated from it. Because we also need to get out of fear of it too. Fear. Yeah. Which comes from a lot of the religious indoctrinations. I mean, take me for instance, I can't tell you how many years I, if anybody said, what do you fear in life the most? I would say death. Well, why? Cause I don't want to go to hell because that was the indoctrination fed to me for so long. And now that I broke free of that, what a liberation it is. And I understand that, you know, it's just a part of life. And we go through it many times. We get reborn. We live our life. We die. We go through the same cycle and same cycle. And it's just a part of part of living is dying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the main part of living. And that's yeah. what uh, Richard Friedman, uh, a big Ashtanga teacher, has said many with the, with the yoga practices. You're actually preparing for death. When you go through your practice, you're preparing to ultimately just let go and surrender to death when death comes a knock in. You know, that's uh, one of my favorite poems is a, always since I was in high school, this poem by John Dunn, Death Be Not Proud. 
it's one of my favorite poems in the whole world because death is also the great equalizer, not to quote Madonna or anything, but it is mm-hmm. the great equalizer. As John Donne says in his poem, paupers and kings both have to surrender to the same fate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, all yeah. three of us, all of us, no one gets out of this world alive. And so I think you're right, Cindy. I think there was, even though we don't want to go back to that time where you mm-hmm. didn't know if every, any day was going to be your last, um, we don't want to go back there. But there was, obviously, that's going to shape your worldview very differently when that's just the reality. There is no other option is that life is fragile. Life isn't as fragile anymore as it was then. And, and in that fragility, there was an understanding, I guess, too, yes, of nature and what and the power of nature and that we are a part of that ebb and flow of the energy of nature. Um, and so, but yeah, so with the Samhain, now from my understanding too, well, I want to get more into the esoterical magical side of it as well, because let's, okay, let's, let's, let's kind of springboard off of being around death. I can imagine now, people make fun of our ancestors who were like hokey and, you know, had a lot of superstitions. I don't think they were superstitions, guys. I think that if they're living so close to death and they're really in tune with nature, they were all a little witchy. They all probably had a, a, a mass understanding. of. Well, can we go over what the definition of witch is? Witch just means a wise woman. That's the, what the word witch means, guys. It, means it is so, it's so demonized. But once you understand what it actually means, you're like, okay. So, and it's, and it's usually someone who lives in, uh, with an understanding of nature. Yeah. I actually did a video about this la- this time last year, where we're trying to, uh, the video was about diffusing the word witch, diffusing the fear from it. Um, but it's, it's, it's just someone who lives more in the rhythms of nature. Absolutely. And they I'll, use I'll share, nature. They I'll use, put your video they use the forces of nature to help them. Yeah. It, and it got demonized by the church. It got demonized through the Inquisition. It got demonized. Um, I actually just, to uh, Wednesday, there's going to be a release of the next installment of the Divine Sophia. She talks about this in this book, historically, that when we had a, a matrilineal society, there was a balance between man and, and woman. But when the priests of Yahweh, which we know Yahweh means Moloch, came in and had that destruction. They started to take away the rights of women. And so women got deemed as, especially if they were midwives or were still into, they got deemed as witches. And there was millions of women that who lost their lives during the Inquisition. And so we have this like fear of these words that have been ingrained into us. But if same with Halloween, if we start to actually understand where they come from, then uh, and I, I know this might piss some of the 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 hardcore fundamentalists watching right now off, but I'm going to say it anyway. Magdalene was a witch. Yashua was a wizard. Mm-hmm. Yashua was a wizard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that that is going to trigger some people, but that's the truth of it all. That's if you true. go back and do your research, and all it is is they were using the elements of nature for healing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how we can de- demonize that if that if you're going against nature and what God made. And, and you know, it's obviously that's black magic, but these are these are people that use the elements to do healings and, and help humanity. And that's all it was. It's not like they were, you know, with their little wands and and casting black magic spells, because I think. The, the word witch and wizard has been so demonized as in it's only specifically for the dark side. You can take anything and use it for bad or for good. Like my tarot cards, you can use it for the bad, but I choose not to. I free will. I choose to use it for the good. I mean, look at uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Yashua's mother, uh, the Virgin Mary, where we know her name was all Amari. You don't get much witchy than that. Like she was literally I mean, when I think of her, I think of her as like the head honcho, like we're going to pull this root, this berry, we're going to make this concoction and it's going to heal you. Reiki, that's what, um, I mean, we know Sydney's a Reiki master. That's what Yashua was doing when he, the laying of hands, that's using that Reiki. So I want to just, yeah, dispel that word. Medicine. They use the elements for medicine. Like for me, I take my herbs, I make tinctures, I make ointments, I make oils. 
by soaking the herbs in uh, certain uh, liquids. And, and it's not to do any harm on anybody. It's for healing. It's to heal. Mm -hmm. It's to help. So in the term of so healing or health. So the oldest art form, you know, one of the oldest ways of doing things. It's the oldest it's fun. medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that. So if we look at the timeline of history, like number one, all of us watching right now, we're the product of people who survived. So mm -hmm. we're tough. Like genetically, we survived. Like we're talking about how life was so hard. Genetically, our ancestors had to at least get to the age to procreate. So all of our ancestors lived past the age of five. Yay. We're winners. Winning, right? Mm -hmm. But not only that, I believe that not only do we carry fragments of memories from our own incarnations, but in our DNA, we also carry the memories of our ancestors too. So mm -hmm. all of us are ancestors of witches. All of us are. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it just from the females alone, these were wise women that were birthing babies before the, the, the invention of doctors, the invention of an OBGYN. These were women. When a woman was giving birth, she wasn't calling for the man down the street to come help her. She was calling for the other women to come and help her give birth in those days. Like these were women who knew how to do this. We're just naturally born with the genius. Even, let's say even, I mean, yes, I agree 100%. We are the ancestors of those who survived and we are the ancestors of the, the, the witches and everyone. But even, even if you just don't want to believe that and you take that away, your body is a, a natural mechanism. I mean, you're just, if you are wearing a bodysuit right now, which everyone is, like everyone who's watching this right now I is hope wearing you are. an actual bodysuit. If you are wearing this bodysuit right now, you have everything, all of the bells and whistles, everything that you need to congregate with nature and to take in. In other words, you were, you were born with it, with or without your, I mean, yes, the, the DNA of your ancestors are in here, but your body suit itself carries oh. water. It carries air. It carries fire. It carries spirit. It carries all the elements. Not only that, but it can well with the elements because it's just an uh, it's a natural uh, offspring of the elements is the the elements from the actual chart like you have the minerals you are made up of hydrogen and the carbon and nitrogen and all of the main things that everything in this uh, world is made up of the same stuff. In other words, your body is made up of the exact same stuff that the rest of the, the the world is made up of. So you are technically designed, just like in your human design, to connect with nature. Now, whether you use it or not, whatever, but you are actually designed with it. And you can even see it, the, the, our human design. Not only do we carry the elements, but we, we carry a lot of the same ratios. Like if you hear the golden ratio as the... Um, as, the, as everything else does. Um, like, you know, the golden ratio, how our fingers are, are made that the ratio of your knuckles with your hands. And when yep. you go like this, you know, that ratio also matches the same circling of your ear, which matches like the conch shells and everything that's out in nature. Um, your lungs, when you think about your lungs and all the little... Um, uh, what are they bronchi. called? The, the things that help you breathe, you know, the little the branches. Yes, the bronchi, and then the, even the smaller ones Bronchial from there that branch out. Well, if you look at a tree, if you were to invert our lungs, and then if you were to look at a tree, it, it has the same practice. It's what's, it's what's called fractaling of a tree. And if, and if you think about the trees, the trees are the lungs yep. of our planet, and our lungs are made to look like trees. Yes. Uh, yes. I know. Like, how cool is that? It's so it's so, so I, all to say is that you if you're wearing one of these, you have the capacity to 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 connect with nature and to use the elements because you were you were born. It's your birthright. You like you were born with it. 
I laugh and I was laughing when you were saying that, Cindy, because, and you know this, Cindy, every, in the Ashtanga practice law, and I just did a video over this, everybody always thinks their arms are too short to get their legs through and a jump through. And I'm always like, no, you're in perfect proportion for yourself. And Cindy, I was one of those that said that I'm like, my arms are too short and my legs are too fat. What do I do? I'll stop you right there. No, you are made in perfect proportion to your own body. <laughs> like everything. Mm-hmm. And you, you were showing that the way it all mimics together, all fits together. Like that. So that's when you, when you say that, when you started saying that, Sydney, I started laughing because I was like, can we make this a public service announcement for all the Ashtanga people out there? <laughs> like scientifically by nature, you are in proportion to yourself. You are beautifully made in the, the mm-hmm. mirror of yourself. And it mirrors, it's the macro and the micro. It's the story of Krishna. When Krishna was born, he was called Govinda Mm -hmm. and his mother saw him eating dirt. And as any mother would do, she went to go move the dirt out of his mouth and she opened his mouth and she saw the whole universe inside of him. That's Mm -hmm. you. You have the whole universe inside of you within that one little fractal of DNA. So does your dog. So does your cat. So does the rat Mm -hmm. in the gutter. So does the snake. So does the tree, you know, and that's, And that's what I think is so beautiful about this time of year again, because you feel it. This is the time of year. Yeah, you feel it because uh, nature is very active right now in its process. And because you have the same elemental stuff that trees and everything else are doing, there's a natural pulling. It's because, again, you're the it, it pulls on the own your own sense of needing to do the same thing that the trees are needing to do okay it's time to shed it's time to dissolve it's time to pull my energy more inward because uh, we're, we're going into the wintry darker months i need to preserve my energy for for what's to come and use it for you know for for what is to come and, and for the um for uh really nourishing the seeds that that you've planted earlier or that you're planting now you know so yeah, I mean, but that but that is the magic though. That's the thing that I also really think it's important for people to understand the ma- magic is esoteric, but magic is also understanding the practicality of it. Magic should be practical. Yeah. And that's what the ancestors knew. Their magic was practical because it had to be. Yeah. So we don't want to take that away from magic itself. So understanding this, just the science of you, your elemental construct, the same as the elemental construct out there that we are cycling. I mean, that is the, the, the like the science behind it is just as important as, because yes, we can get carried away with the esoteric and all the woo-woo stuff. But as I often say, I mean, you can see things and all this stuff, but if your life is sh- sh- crap, and it's just completely, I mean, of course, we, we all go through our Kali season. I don't want to, I don't, I don't mean, so if you're going through a Kali season, a, a season of things dissolving, because, you know, something is new is coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, because something is new is coming. That's, that's one thing. But I'm talking about if your life is just kind of crap and it's been that way for years and years and years and um, you can't seem to like, hold a job or do this or do that, but you can still see aliens and ghosts and spirits. Like, what does it matter? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So it's like, you have to use your magic for practicality and making your life better. Like I would rather listen to the one, I would rather listen to the person that has like their life is unfolding into something beautiful than listening to someone who's telling me they can they can see aliens and they can see ghosts and they have this amazing ayahuasca experience, but they're like living on the streets somewhere or hardly like, li- you know, like that yeah. doesn't impress yeah. me. Yeah. The person who's going to impress me is the person who, you know, ha- has this beautiful unfolding of life and they have an understanding of nature and how to use it to to feed themselves, not just to experience for the sake of for the sake of seeing something just because it's cool. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally, and you sent me something, Stephanie, the other day. It was like, what did the, the guy said? So many people are so fascinated with ascending, but they have yet to learn how to ground. Yeah, it was yeah, um, the descending that comes out. Somebody first. had posted. They want the, they want this, the spiritual hoo-boo, loobity jubity as, as uh, Stephanie's kid calls it, but they don't even know how to be a human. And you came exactly. here to be a human. 
Okay. Yeah. It said a lot of people are obsessed with ascending, but have not yet mastered grounding. And what does Maggie mm -hmm. say? She Magdalene says, That's what in order says. to you must ascend, descend. you must descend. Yeah. You must first descend before you ascend. The descending is the tantric yeah. path. That, that is the, usually the path of the feminine is the descending path. The ascending path is usually the path more of the masculine, the Shiva, the Shakti. That, that you know? makes sense because Apana is usually the feminine energy, the moon energy, mm -hmm. the descending, the pranic is the, that's why women have a cycle once a month and men have a cycle every three months. Yes, I'll say that again for those in the back who didn't hear, mm -hmm. men have a cycle every three months. So if your boyfriend, your brother, your husband get a little bitchy every three months, they're on their man period. Give them some yeah. idle. <laughs> so my doll will help um so but that's the solar that's the solar energy so the way i see Samhain too it was like they would come together for this almost like a festival within their communities that way i see it from my modern perspective it was like a festival they have bonfires um they understood that there were uh the, the, the veil was thinner like i said they were already attuned to this so they probably really felt it they relied a lot on the knowledge of their past ancestors, which is something I think we're starting to rediscover now, but was forgotten for a long time and honoring, which we're going to get to the day of the dead with the Latin American culture, but honoring the past ancestors. Now, Cindy, I understand that the, uh, the culture of dressing up for Halloween into a scary costume was at these bonfires was to scare away the dark entities from coming into the community exactly. because the veil was thinner. And so they wanted and the jack-o'-lanterns were the yeah, same thing to scare away these demons. Mm -hmm. And they knew because if the veil is thinner, we have to remember we're on a polarized planet. We can't escape the polarization. We have the darkness and the light. And so when you're, when the veil is thinning, it's not ever just going to thin for one side of the playing field. It's for all playing mm -hmm. fields. And so they understood that. And there was, because they understood that, they were able to do what they felt was necessary in order to keep the darkness at bay because we mm -hmm. are coming in, you know? So that's why they would dress up as goblins or scary exactly. things. And, and we see this, and this is my thing too. Like I have, I probably should have, Actually, in a minute, I'll get up and go get it. We, I have a mask in my front room here that's from India. It's a very scary looking mask. Now, if you are in India, people hang these masks on the outside of their house, these scary masks. They're to scare away demons. Now, I mm -hmm. don't hang it outside of my house because I would have a, a cross burning in the front yard if I did, because um, people don't understand what that is. And and so I'm going to go get that mask. Do y'all want to talk more on that about like what that was, the dressing up, how we get this idea of, of Halloween to dress up where it came from this scaring away of demons. It wasn't celebrating demons. It wasn't pulling demons mm -hmm. in. It was trying to scare them away. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let y'all yeah, was... go get that mask quickly. Hold on one second. Y'all keep talking. Oops. Yeah. I mean, that's my complete understanding about it is uh, um they would dress up in the yeah the jack-o'-lanterns that's the reason they carved out the pumpkins because that was what was available to them at the time mm -hmm. you know the yeah. the pumpkins and the gourds and all that that's what was uh seasonally growing at the time yeah and uh, so yeah. that's where the original carving out of all that was to help to keep the the evil spirits away in that bay so yeah Ooh. Oh. So I know Stephanie's seen this because she's been in my house. It's always a great conversation starter with someone. <laughs> it's right there when you walk in. It's right there. So this this is from India, um, and in India you would see now this is made out of wood, which was easier to travel with. In India, most of them are concrete that they put outside. They're really heavy, uh, but this one's wood. And so these masks are outside of houses to scare away demons. It's scaring away. Mm -hmm a demon it's not inviting it in it's scaring it away mm -hmm. and so i hope people i hope that makes sense to people and, and i wanted to bring that up because we see it now my niece and nephew always dress up as like their favorite cartoon character or whatever and i was telling uh, stephanie before you got on sitting i don't even they get so excited to show me their costumes i don't even know who they're dressed up as because i'm so out of the coast of that but uh but they're so excited so we do see a turn in that where people are dressing up as princesses and 
you know, we have more of that freedom now in our modern world to just use our imaginations to have fun. Um, you know, what was that great show from Canada that I loved it? Um, Sh uh, Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Oh, yeah. And people were dressing. My sister dressed up as uh, the mother from Shit's Creek because, you know, people, you know, it's a way to have fun because that was a hysterical show. If you haven't watched Shit's Creek, hysterical mm -hmm. show. Um, really, I'm going to have to. Oh, it's on that. It's so funny. It's the so only show that I watch from Canada is Letterkenny, which is hilarious. Well, Shit's Creek is hysterical. It's it, I, yes. I will watch it over and over and over again. It is so funny. Um, so anyway, but uh, but yes, yeah, so I, I hope that people so when we're con we see these people condemning because we do know that the dark cult, the dark occult players are doing their also they're also celebrating their high seasons now as well their high holidays because they are also able just as we're able to harness in mm -hmm. information from the light they're able to grab from the darkness that doesn't mean we should stop pulling from the light and we have to be very aware of this because when a child dresses up as a skeleton or something where is that coming from that's coming from a historical heritage well if a skeleton mm -hmm. is so evil then why are we skeleton with covered right. with and that doesn't make that never made any sense to me that the skeleton is evil because right. we have one <laughs> so it's kind of like some of this is just common sense and i guess you know i think a lot of it too stems from the indoctrination of the church i mean i remember going to church and they would condemn halloween and you, i went to some churches that would do a trunk or treat you couldn't dress anything scary but you would go from trunk to trunk within all the cars within the parking lot and get your candy and everything. So they made it like a Christian friendly alternative, which I thought was really boring, by the way. Well, and also like if you are a Christian, when you want to dress up as a demon to, to scare the demons away, like, but let's, let's talk about that too. Let's talk about the empowerment and the sovereignty of everything. Cause this is what's really affecting like what I'm seeing. Our ancestors had sovereignty. They had their own power within their own hands to take care of this. They knew what to do. They knew how to move with nature. They came together. I mean, the bonfires, the, the harvesting, everything they did as a community, which is what we do with trick or treating. Now we do it as a community in your neighborhood, right? The kids get together with their friends. They, they go out and do all that. It's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. You, you dress your dog up. It's a community thing. Same thing. Our ancestors did community thing. The ancestors, our ancestors had the power. They knew what was coming through. They understood the mission. They understood the mission. Mm -hmm. They understood the work. They knew that this, the veil was thinner. And so they prepared for whatever that was going to bring. Right. And we've mm -hmm. been stripped of that. So I'm, mean, you hear a church saying, Oh, don't dress up as something scary. So you're inviting the demons in then. You could say it that way. Are you inviting them in then because you don't have someone there to scare them off? I was such a church rebel. I still dressed up and had my son dress up. And I dressed my dog up a couple of years ago as Darth Vader, you know, because I'm a sci-fi nerd. But it went, and the costume didn't really fit her very well either. But you have fun with it. I mean, see, I'm laughing about it. You laugh and you have fun. And that, that brings up your, your vibrational frequency when you laugh and you're having fun. And, just and especially and within a community, then all together, you're all vibing higher than you normally would. I remember when I worked in the medical field, every year we had a theme. We picked out a theme for what we would dress up as. And the last year I was there, it was Star um, Disney theme, which I took advantage of that and went with my, my Star Wars nerdiness. And I was Princess Leia, which I had such a ball doing that. Um, but it's like patients would come in and like 90% of them were like, oh my gosh, you guys look so great. And it would comfort them because we're dressed up in these silly costumes. They're there for their doctor's appointment. What better way to calm a patient down, right? But you got a couple of those people could come in and go, this is very unprofessional. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's like a fundamentalist type of position on it. And actually would be normally fundamentals who came in that condemned it. But the thing is when you're dressing up and you're having fun and you're kind, you're almost letting loose in a, in an innocent way, really. And it's, it's almost, I don't know. I can't explain it. There's nothing better than just being goofy and silly and laughing. That's like such good medicine. It, to me, it was medicine. You know what I, I mean? 
I always, I say for my, most of my favorite childhood memories come from Halloween when I was in yep. school. And I remember my best friend growing up, her mama, I still remember her, one of her Halloween costumes because I was mesmerized by it. She dressed up as Pippi Longstocking and her mm -hmm. mama, Mrs. Thomas, rest in peace. She's no longer with us, but she took a dry cleaner hanger, you know, the wire hangers, put it on Paige's head and braided her hair around the wire. She probably used five cans of Aquanet just to keep the hair. I mean, I think her hair was like stuck hard, you know, <laughs> to have the Pippi Longstocking braids. And I still remember that to this day. Like how creative was that to create that for your child? It's fun to create costumes. It is. Oh, like the first year my son like actually chose his costume, he didn't choose a regular costume. He um, took all, he wanted green and black everything that had to do with spiders. Of course, it's like seriously spiders out of all things because um, I'm arachnophobic. But I had to sew onto this, um, this uh, t-shirt that had spiders already on it. I put spider webs on the t-shirt and then I sewed in actual toy spiders on it. And I dyed his hair green for the night. You know, the spray, you know, you put in the hair lime green. He wore his jeans and that's all he wanted for a costume. He didn't want to be a stormtrooper. He didn't want to be Batman. He, he invented his own costume and I just went along with it. I'm like, okay, this is kind of strange, but whatever you do, what you do you. I will say before, cause I want to get to the day of the decks. Now we've been on for about an hour now, but I, I will say when I'm, one of my friends growing up dressed up as Ariel, the little mermaid for Halloween, she was toe headed, just white hair. And long blonde hair, white hair. So her mom got went got the red hairspray that was supposed to wash out. It didn't <laughs> wash out. She got to be Ariel for like a year. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's great. I think it's because her hair was so white. It just held the color. Yeah. And I remember her mom being, we were at dance class like a week after Halloween. Her mom was like so just upset. I remember her mom talking about like, I can't get this out of her hair. Like we keep washing it. It's not coming out. So she was literally Ariel for a whole year because the, <laughs> the dye oh. was, but she was little. She didn't care. But let's now switch over because I do want to talk about the Day of the Dead, which has become a huge fascination with, with Americans, with Westerners. Of, of, of recent, but this is a Latin American holiday. Do they do it in Peru too, Cindy? Is it, or is it just Latin America? It's mainly Latin America. I don't, they don't do it so much. Uh, they, well, you know, Peru and everything, because you know that the, the uh, Catholics have also turned it into All Saints Day, November 1st. And so, um, no, like in the indigenous part of Peru, I don't know if they celebrate, like, no, the, November 1st is uh, the Day of the Dead. Yeah. But they do All Saints Day, which is like the thing that they put over the Day of the Dead. And, you know, I think we've talked about this before, how they very much taken a lot of their their traditions and put it on top of traditions that already existed and just renamed it. Uh, LOL. Christmas. So, <laughs> All Saints Day is what the Catholics uh, called it. Um, but it went on top of, of um, Day of the Dead which is, yeah, mainly uh, Latin America, November 1st, where you, yeah, you set up an altar and everything for, for your, for your ancestors. You be a big altar too. It's like huge. You go you to the know, graveyard, you right? The you, you, you basically go visit your family in the graveyard and, mm -hmm. and set up an altar, which I know that a lot of like fundamentalist Christians have tried to twist this. Like this is some form of black magic and all this kind of stuff, but no, it's literally just honoring the ones that have been honoring your ancestors. Glorious. Yeah, yeah. And that's that veil is the thinnest. So you're able to, to hear and feel more. Yeah, about that the ancestors, you know, they, you know, they really believe that your ancestors would take the nourishment, they would take the food. And um, it was just a, a, a practice of gratitude, you know, gratitude and appreciation for, for everything of your ancestors. And yeah, and then yeah, how you carry the the beautiful things. So, so yeah, I mean, we carry, you know, we often talk about too, how we carry some of the trauma of our ancestors. Of course we do that, but we also carry all of the wisdom and the knowledge. You know, as you said, we are, we are the, um, we're the, our ancestors were the survivors. And so we're the offspring of, of survivors. That's what we're built off of. So it's like honoring, honoring everything, honoring the wisdom, honoring the knowledge, honoring um, and it's, I mean, it's just in every, in every culture and in every indigenous cultures, 
um, especially the, the Native American indigenous cultures of North America, um, they're all about their ancestors. I mean, everything is about, you know, honoring grandmother and honoring grandfather and the, our ancestors did this is because they knew that, that um, that's what our lives are built upon, what our ancestors have created. And again, often, there. often we focus on the negative things, but there's so many beautiful, positive things that have come from that. And, you know, we don't want to forget, you know, we don't want to forget that. It's like just your honoring of your tradition, the honoring of your lineage, uh, knowing where you, you come from, especially in right now when we are so future oriented and wanting to, and, and I don't know, maybe that's just me being old fashioned too. Cause I think, you know, young people, not all young people, but maybe, you know, like, like some young people, it's like, oh, you know, like forget our answer. We're, we're creating a new world based off of this. And then, yes, we are. I mean, you're recreating a new world, but your ancestors meant something, I you know, and no, to Ross honor Ross the actually. lineage and to honor those traditions too, but still, you know, move forward, but don't forget where you've come from either. And Ram Dass speaks about this as well. I love, obviously I'm obsessed with Ram Dass. I hope Ram Dass comes to visit me in spirit form. I would, I would welcome that ghost, but um, I'd love to have a conversation with him. But um, he would talk about that because he was born Richard Alpert, a Jewish man from New York. And he took on Ram, the name Ram Dass from his guru. But he would often talk about this, about this idea of respecting your DNA. So if you were born a, a European white person, you need to understand the Druids. You need to understand the, the Celtic culture, the Anglo-Saxon culture. You need to understand this because that's where you come from. And there's something there for you to learn from. If you are, you know, African, you need to respect that, that lineage. If you're a native, you, you can't, you can't lineage swap once you're in, once you're in your, that doesn't mean we can't learn from each other's cultures. We can't celebrate each other's cultures. I mean, I'm a huge lover of the Indian culture. Obviously I'm a huge, I bet, very much a lot of respect for the yoga practice, but I can take that information and I can take that, that lineage of the Hindu stories and, and incorporate it within myself as a white person who ha also has Druid heritage and Celtic heritage mm -hmm. and Southern heritage. Like I can, I can, you know, be me as Bryce, but also learn from other cultures, but respecting where I hope that makes sense where the ancestors come from. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it, if you're someone that's still afraid of the day of the dead because of the pro with propaganda about it, how many of us have seen the spirit of our grandmother or of our grandfather comforting us, have come to visit us in a dream? And we've loved Mine likes it. to mess with me. But we've yeah. loved it. Like, so how different is that from the Latin American people celebrating the day of the dead. It's the same thing. It's the same comfort. It's the same recognition. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so when we start to see the similarities too, we start to have respect for these other cultures for what they're actually doing. And, um, and, and, and I just really hope, cause I know, especially down here in the South, a lot of people think that what they're doing day of the dead is nothing but black magic, but no, it's literally them just saying, thank you, grandmother. Thank you, grandfather. Because of you, I have life. Yeah. And, and that's why um, I've sat in uh, several sweat lodges back in the day, too. Um, and that's one of the first thing, you know, they you, you sit in the sweat lodge and they bring in the rocks or the stones to uh, and then they pour water on top of the rocks and stones. The stones have been heated under fire all day long. They yeah. put the rocks in the middle and then they pour water on top of the rocks and it's the steam of the water that creates the steam where you sweat. But every single time when you said, thank you, grandpa, it just reminded me every single time they brought in a rock, you're a rock. One of the rocks, the, the rocks were sacred and they were they were the, your grandfathers, like your the rocks were grandfathers. And whenever a rock was put in, everyone that that was what you would say. Thank you, grandfather. Thank you. So every time everyone put a rock in the middle, that's what you would say. Thank you. Like, thank you, grandfather. Because even the, even nature, you know, just bringing it even back to that, like it's all part of your history, you know? All For my, um, when I got married, I, I was married in the fall and I, apparently I did this subconsciously, but the 
biggest thing that I had arranged was, and I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, but apparently it's not all in my subconscious. I literally made a table where you could call it an altar for all of the deceased grandparents between yeah, David that. and myself. Yeah. So we put a picture and then, um, mm -hmm. uh, the type of flower that was, um, my grandfather's favorite and for David's grandmother, he was very close to was the butterfly that represented her. And we made this, the, it was a big arrangement. Um, and I remember it was super important to me, like super important. I wanted nothing more than my grandfather to be at my wedding. And I knew he'd be there in spirit. And it's funny because two days before my wedding, he came to me in my dreams and he was helping me set up my wedding. Mm, I got married oh. in October. So it was, and I, I knew he was there. And so it's funny that I did that, but I didn't even know what I was doing. Well, that's, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that because that's actually really big down here in the South at weddings, like huge. Everybody always has a table for the deceased relatives. And uh, like my, my cousin that just got married a few months ago, his father passed away um, sit around the same time Rom Doss did December 2019 and they had a chair up front with my uncle's picture on it um, as an all so that that's an altar that's what that is mm -hmm. that's an altar and so if, if you're like Stephanie if you my, my sister had it her with our, our grandparents and who had passed away before our aunt all that kind of stuff uh, at one of my cousin's weddings during the ceremony they read off all the names of all the family members who couldn't be there due to passing away they read off all the names. That's another way. That's the same thing as what they're doing mm -hmm. as well. The day of the dead. And so what my hope is, and, and I want to continue this. I actually want to, I know we're going over an hour now. Uh, what my hope is, and if you girls are up for it, I want to continue these conversations, especially as we get into the holidays. Um, because when we come into this, uh, this great awakening, if you will, if we're so, as we said in the beginning, Steph and I, if we're so hell bent in destroying all this stuff without understanding it, without even researching it, then we're not awake. We've learned nothing. Well, there's a richness that comes to all this too. I mean, when you, that, that's the thing about, you know, honoring culture and the heritage and because, I mean, the bigger question, question is, yes, you know, we're doing it to honor the ancestors and all that stuff. But then, you know, even the uh, uh, like a bigger question that you can ask yourself is, well, how does that make you feel? How does that make your life better? How does that make your life richer and more fulfilled than just giving you a sense of of being that you're not alone and that, you know, that you've come from something that's really beautiful. So it's like really taking in how it serves you and how it actually helps you in your own personal development and in your own awakening and in your own enrichment. Because if it doesn't enrich you, then why do it? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just coming back to practical, like the, pra the practicality of magic. Yeah. It's designed to enrich you. So yes, you're, you're, you're doing it out of gratitude, but that gratitude and that, that respect and that reverence that you put into that space, it's going to do something to you. You know what I mean? It's going to make you feel something that maybe you, you haven't felt before. It's going to make you feel fuller. It's going to, it's going to make you brighter. It's going to make you understand more. You see what I mean? And, th and those are the qualities that we really need to develop within ourselves. So it, it's like understanding how these how these different things that you do, do in, enrich your life. It's not just doing it because the people before us did it and whatever, but it, there's a reason behind it and how it actually serves us too. It doesn't just serve your ancestors, but it serves you and it helps you. I mean, that's what we're doing here on October the 27th. I think I told you, Bryce, yep. is we're doing a little ceremony here and that part of it is, is that it's honoring your ancestor but again it's understanding why am i doing this and how is how is this actually serving me and the rest of humanity you know versus you know i think it's one of the things that can bring us closer versus the something that causes division you. yeah the highest good yeah I, I i'm planning on being there my that's my nephew's 10th birthday uh but i think yeah i'm planning on be i'm hoping stephanie will be there too <laughs> 
Yeah. We'll talk. So, so what I want to propose to us, because I want to continue this conversation because I, I just don't want to see people condemning other people anymore. You know, yes, mm -hmm. we recognize there are people who have utilized these holidays to do bad things. We understand that N none of us do that. None of us. I, I very much am the believer of live and let live. I'm very much the believer of the law of consent. I don't want to hurt anybody. I know that Stephanie nor Cindy, I know them personally as friends. They don't want to hurt anybody either. You know, everything Stephanie and Cindy and I do, we do with the intention of making it for the highest good of, of ourselves and of the people around us. And so, and I'm saying that with most of the people out there that ha celebrate how, even just thinking about the enrichment, not even with the ancestors, but with the Halloween, if your child mm -hmm. is laughing and having fun, you've enriched its mm -hmm. life. You know, mm -hmm. you've given it childhood memories. Like I have memories. We all have memories of, of fun Halloween stuff, you know, like it, that's enrichment. That's giving them substance. It's giving, making them closer to their community, to their friends, you know, um, so I love that you brought that up, Cindy. It's the intention. And so what I'm going to do, because I do want to, I really, as we go through this holiday season, I want to continue this conversation with you ladies as we go through, um, we can do a follow-up of Halloween. I'm going to ask if there's anybody watching right now that's feeling a little triggered or maybe seeing things a little differently or has some questions, ask them in the comment section below. Even if you want me to research an angle of Halloween, I will do that. We will talk about it on this show. Um, because that's, that's important. Understanding is so important. And then when we get into Thanksgiving, we'll talk about that. And then when we get into, um, Christmas, we'll talk about that as well. That's a big one. We'll talk about Christmas. We'll talk about the winter solstice, all that kind of stuff. And what that means and the positive aspects of what all this means, as far as our ancestors, what they did. And you're right. And something you say a lot, uh, Cindy, which I respect you for, you talk a lot about the word indigenous and as a white American, we're often kind of excluded from this category of indigenous, but all of us are indigenous. Mm -hmm. All of us are. We all are indigenous people. And that's part of that. Absolutely. I think respecting that lineage as well. You know, I respect mm -hmm. the hell out of my white ancestors who survived hard winters. The Lord knows I couldn't do it now. I could survive mm -hmm. a hot summer, but I'm up here for a week in the <laughs> middle of winter. We'll see. We'll we'll get you acclimated, Bryce. We'll activate the the whiteness in me. But you know, I got I got a lot of Scandinavian in me. <laughs> Lord, those people went yeah. through some harsh winds, and they survived. And I'm a product of that survival. Same with all you guys watching. Look at the the the, the heat of Africa that you survived. If you have heritage from Africa. The, the east, the far east gets real hot and muggy. If you're of east, of, if you're of Asian mm -hmm. descent, Lord, you are a survivor of some intense swamp heat. Like that's, that's, yeah. that's incredible. Not that's only that, but like the famines, the droughts, the locusts, the, yes. like there's so much. I mean, it was, it's a, it's, it's been, it's a, it was a ride for our ancestors to get, they didn't need reality to TV. provide the Different. foundation for us to be where we are now. I mean, they had to go through some, through some like talk about you know sitting in the in the heat and of the full a full experience to to make you to yeah break you <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk about a come to Jesus moment when you're sitting either in the, I don't know what's worse, the intense heat or the intense cold. Like, I don't know which one's worse. They're different. I'll take the intense heat any day over the intense cold. I mean, I, 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 um, I know you, I've, I've never done a sweat lodge, but I've studied them a, a lot. And, um, there's some sweat lodges here in Georgia. I think you should go to Stephanie. Cause that is, you, you hear I me mean, people. It is. All it right. Is let's, really you know what? Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You I'm ready to just deep dive into all of this stuff. I've been, you know, I've been so church indoctrinated. It's time to pop that cherry now. Okay, let's just do it. <laughs> but, like, let's do it. We're not talking about cute little saunas. We're not talking about this. No, no, no. I'm, I'm ready. Let's just do it. You know, it's, it's, uh, I'm yeah, like ready. I'm ready. They're rough. You got like bodily fluids. No, going. they are. They're rough. You're, you're praying. Even if you don't believe in prayer, it doesn't matter. You're praying. You find God. <laughs> you find, you're like whoever's listening. I mean, people are like. You're praying to something. I've heard, I've read stories of, you know, people just pee on themselves. And you're so close together. You've got urine from other people on you. It's, it's intense. It's very intense. What a spiritual. So, uh, 
Hey, listen. Let's do it. Let's There's do it. There's people that drink their pee for spirituality, but anyway. So I'm going to ask you guys, again, if you have any questions that you want us to talk about, um, if you have want us to look up any type of angle of, of Halloween. I've covered Halloween multiple times on this channel before. If you want to go and should be in the playlist, I'll see if I can find the old videos where I went through the history and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you have questions and you want us to talk about it, if you're still a little confused, that's what I'm hoping that moving forward, instead of coming at each other with condemnation, we come to each other with a level of trying to understand and, and trying to live and let live and allow people to have their human experience, you know, and not, not try to control. We don't want to go from one satanic controller group running our world to a handmaiden's tale which to me is another satanic group, you know, like we don't want the beauty of life to be stripped from us. We don't want the fun to be stripped from us. So anyway, so I'm going to now, Cindy, I know you got some courses coming up. Uh, so I'm going to be placing all of your, uh, you've got a Reiki course coming up. You've got some other, other stuff coming up. So I'm going to be placing all of Cindy's links down in the description box below guys, so that you can look into see of what all those courses Cindy has to offer, especially, especially if you're in the Atlanta area or close enough to the Atlanta area, if you want to get involved, as I've said, Cindy's Shala, her mystery school is a very, very special place. Um, I'm, I get the pleasure of going there at least once a week to teach. And it is a very, very special place where Cindy has done a lot for a very long time. She's been there doing her, doing her little, her little hoobity jubity stuff. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Her, her hill in the world. 19 years. 19 years. 19 years, 19 years in November. Wow. 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 That's why I got all these gray hairs. <laughs> I, I, I like the, the gray and white. I'm actually, that's actually what's happening to me. I'm starting to get it. And I actually don't want to dye it. Everybody's like, dye your hair. I'm like, why? Why? That's just my wisdom coming out. That's the good thing about being blonde. I remember my hairdresser told me back in my mid twenties, because when you're born blonde around middle school, high school, you start to have to start highlighting your hair because it gets kind of dull. But she's like, girl, when you start getting gray though, it's going to blend right on in. So <laughs> <laughs> Scumplant right on it. Is. So, um, so anyway, guys, thank you guys for sitting through this. Thank you so much to Cindy and Stephanie. I will be putting Stephanie's links as well to her channel, her courses, all that kind of stuff. Um, so make sure you check out the description box below, and I will be including um Cindy's video from a year ago where she goes over the word witch. So, anyway, guys, we will all talk to you very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.